If we learn anything from the deaths of our friends and family members, it's that time is short. You don't know if you've got two days before you die or 50 years before you die. Either way, it's not a very long time, so you'd better make the most of whatever time you've got. I suggest building something that will last, or helping someone else build something that will last. Nabil died young, but Nabil had already built something that will last forever. With the time I've got, I'd like to build an empire, the greatest empire in the history of the world. Not an empire of cities and armies. Those empires come and go. Just ask the Babylonians. I want to build an apologetics empire that crushes every false claim that gets in its way. What's cool is that the power of the internet makes it much, much easier to build an empire. Empires of the past required soldiers, horses, ships. You had to have them if you wanted to spread your empire around the world. But now you can spread your empire all around the world online. You don't need five or six hundred thousand warriors. You need five or six warriors cranking out epic content. So how do you build an apologetics empire? Easy. You imagine what it would look like, and then you work backwards and figure out what steps are necessary to get there. Here's what I think you'd need. Five or six, maybe seven or eight, Christian YouTubers, along with one or two tech guys sitting in a war room of the studio headquarters in the morning, going through the notifications that just came in from their millions of subscribers. Okay, there's been a terrorist attack in Nigeria. Who's on it? You? All right, let's make sure we get that out by noon. Who wants to help him go through all the articles so we make sure we got the best information possible? You? All right, your partners for the day. Um, uh-oh. Chris Rock just said something really stupid about Jesus. It's all over social media. Who's going to respond? All right, you're on it. Uh, what else? Oh, the famous skeptic duo, Super Atheist and the Hitch Slap, just posted a new video claiming that they can ground objective morality in their own personal feelings. Not sure that's even worthy of a response, but let's go ahead and watch their new video and then decide whether we're going to point out how stupid it is. Uh, after that, the rest of us can finish recording that skit about Muhammad allowing his followers to hire prostitutes. Uh, let's make sure we're all done by 7 because we are going live at 8. And remember, teamwork makes the dream work. Because you can reach so many people so quickly on the internet, I believe that all you really need is a small, well-organized, disciplined, dedicated group of content creators with a bunch of viewers who help spread the content and you can wreak havoc on the nonsense that's circulating on the internet. They would put out so much content so consistently that their opponents would be reeling, unable to recover from the onslaught. Now, the power of technology also allows people to spread false claims and stupid ideas rapidly. But false claims and stupid ideas are inherently weaker than true claims and good ideas. And if every time someone makes a stupid claim, you smack it down instantly, same day, people will eventually start to catch on. The internet is full of crap. It needs a laxative. We are that laxative. So you wouldn't actually need much for a global apologetics empire. How long would it take to get there? With maximum effort, probably about two years. It's good to set a time frame. As soon as you do, your brain starts coming up with ways to make it happen. What are the steps in building an online apologetics empire? First, you need a pool of Christian YouTubers. Keep in mind that there's a difference between someone who posts videos on YouTube and a YouTuber. A YouTuber is someone who lives on YouTube. Most Christian apologists are still focused on speaking in churches and on college campuses and on writing books and blog articles. Many of them post content on YouTube, but YouTube is secondary for them. We need more apologists for whom YouTube is primary. There aren't a lot of us. As far as I know, I was the first full-time YouTube Christian apologist. Maybe you can think of someone who did it before me. I can't think of anyone. I can only think of two or three full-time YouTube apologists now. Given the importance of the internet, I'd say that's a shame. 
Christians still haven't recognized the historical significance of the information revolution we're in right now. If Christians had recognized the significance of the age we're in, churches would have dedicated resources to funding dozens, if not hundreds, of full-time online apologists and evangelists. There has never been a better time in history to spread the gospel and to defend it and to correct false teachings than right now. Sadly, we are lagging way, way behind here. We need to fix that. As far as getting some more full-time Christian YouTubers, we can learn from apologetics ministries that came before us. Before YouTube, one of the ways many apologists were able to dedicate their lives to speaking and writing in defense of the faith was by getting picked up and promoted by someone who already had a successful ministry. In other words, people like Josh McDowell or Ravi Zacharias would become popular through speaking and writing, and over time they would end up with a massive speaking circuit. But once they had a massive speaking circuit, they were in a position to help up-and-coming apologists get started. They would say, hey, you're a great speaker, and you've got an interesting story. Why don't you come work with us for a few years? We can help you get established. Then that person would join an apologetics ministry for a while, spend a few years speaking around the world, and then, if he wanted, he could go off on his own, because everyone knew who he was now. We need an online version of that. As Christian YouTubers become popular, they need to help and promote new Christian YouTubers, because it's hard getting started on YouTube. Think about it. If you're just getting started on YouTube, you could make the greatest video on the existence of God ever, and who's going to see it? You have no subscribers. That's where already established YouTubers come in. If we see someone who's got some good content but who can't get many views, we can help him. Sometimes a new YouTuber might need better equipment. His camera or mic might be garbage, so we get him some better equipment. Sometimes he just doesn't understand how to optimize his videos. He doesn't know how to make catchy titles or thumbnails or how to write his descriptions or add keywords. He doesn't understand how the YouTube algorithm works. So we train him. Sometimes he just needs help getting his first thousand or 10,000 subscribers. So we tell our subscribers about him and many of them go subscribe. This can snowball very quickly. If I help two or three channels blow up, then there are suddenly three or four of us. So when we see someone new come along, we've got three or four channels that can promote him. Soon there are a dozen channels working together, and we can blow up a new channel overnight. Channels that blow up are then supported through crowdfunding, and in a very short while we have a bunch of full-time Christian YouTubers cranking out daily content flooding the internet. Five or six of those YouTubers who aren't glued to their current location then move to the same area and start putting out content as a team. They continue making videos for their own channels, but they've got a team to help them. And they go live as a team every night, 365 nights a year, online, free for all, taking all challenges. And there are lots of other things a team of YouTubers can do when You've got a team of YouTubers, all of whom know how to create engaging content. They can figure out ways to get all of that information that's currently in books into videos. These books, they contain lots of amazing material that just isn't available in video form. But many people today learn from videos. So we get all of the relevant information from the books into videos so that everyone in the world with an internet connection has access to the best information available. That's how you build an apologetics empire. That's what I'll be working on this year. I want to baptize the internet. I've been told by several of the people who know me best that I always think like a military general. Anyway, there's a lot of other stuff going on this year, some of it behind the scenes. In February, about a dozen or so Christian YouTubers are getting together for several days to discuss strategies for the near future. We're going to put together everything we know about YouTube and social media 
implements a number of new strategies for one year and then put together our own training course on how to crush it on YouTube. A training course is crucial because wherever I go, people come up to me and say, hey, I'd like to do apologetics on YouTube, but I don't know where to start. What advice do you have? Well, we're going to put everything together for the next generation of Christian YouTubers. We'll probably have a beginner's course, an intermediate course, and an advanced course, but we're going to make everything we've learned available for others. Jorge, who's with Cross-Examined, Frank Turek's ministry, said that once we're ready with the training, he'll put together yearly conferences where people who want to do YouTube come out, go through the training, and then, as part of the conference, make one or two videos that will then be watched and critiqued by others. The reason this is awesome is that if you ask a bunch of 50-year-olds in church how many of you would like to do YouTube, there might be one or two, but never a lot. They grew up before YouTube took off. But if you go down the hall to the youth meeting and ask them the same question, it's all of them. Young Christians would love to be online influencers, and we would love to train them. You know, I'd like to train them because I believe that they're going to do YouTube better than we do it. We're the pioneers. We had to figure out a lot of things by trial and error, but the next generation grew up on YouTube. And when they get going, they are going to run circles around us. Speaking of conferences, a bunch of Christian YouTubers are getting together in April for a conference where we give presentations on apologetics. Everyone is invited, and it will also be live streamed. It's kind of experimental. We don't know if people want to actually show up to events when they can just watch us online. But we're going to try a conference and see how it goes. Due to the campaigning of Mike Winger, I got outvoted on the conference name. I suggested Apologetics Roadshow. Winger campaigned for Apologeticon and won. If the conference doesn't work out, we know who to blame. There's a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes, but some of it is top secret. If you want to help build the empire this year, I think the most important step right now is helping some other YouTubers. The first two I can think of are John McRae and Vocab Malone. John McRae, aka What Do You Meme, went from zero to well over 40,000 subscribers in almost no time. He responds to anti-Christian memes and atheist videos, and he does a lot of commentary on current events. But I happen to know that John is almost killing himself to put out videos. He's got a horrible job. Well, he's got a perfectly good job, but it's a horrible job for someone who makes YouTube videos. It's a job that drains all your brain power all day long so that by the time you get home, you don't want to do anything that requires thinking. John does it anyway. But John almost has enough support to go full-time. And the reason I'm recommending him is that when John all of a sudden has all day to make videos, he's going to be putting out way more content and his channel is going to explode. If he goes full-time in 2020, he won't have any trouble hitting 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I think he'll probably hit a million subscribers in the next two to three years, making him the second YouTube apologist to reach a million subscribers. I'll be the first, John will be second. If you want to check out John's work, I've got a link to his channel in the description box. If you want to support his rise, he's got channel memberships and he's on Patreon and Subscribestar. I've got a link to his Patreon page in the description box. Even if John isn't putting out the kind of content you're interested in, I'm saying that because some people follow me primarily for information about jihad and sharia and aren't really interested in responses to atheists. Even if you're interested in different kinds of content from what John is covering, please support his work, even if it's just for a few months. You don't have to sign up to support him for five years. I believe that John just needs a window of opportunity and that once he's putting out videos every day, he'll have all the support he needs. So if you can, please support John. Then, of course, there's vocab alone. Keep in mind that without vocab, there would be no Islamicize me, there would be no Muhammad's boom boom room, 
we record those videos at vocab's house and we destroy his house and break all of his stuff in the process we've broken his walls we broke his door i once flooded his house we burned his pictures i'll be like yo vocab we need to smash a laptop for this video give me a laptop but it's my laptop come on it's for a video or i'll be like vocab we need to smash a chair for this scene so bring me your least favorite chair then the next time we're recording hey vocab bring me your next least favorite chair. And what's cool is that Islam's not even his main interest. Vocab focuses on refuting a cult called the Black Hebrew Israelites. And there are Black Hebrew Israelites who will tell you that even though their killing spree hasn't started yet, Vocab is first on their list when they do start their killing spree. As if one death sentence weren't enough, Vocab is the only person in history to portray Muhammad on a weekly basis, exposing Muhammad's silliest and most dangerous teachings dressed as Muhammad himself. Always support the people who do the most dangerous work. Vocab hasn't told me that he even wants to go full-time, but he does have some expenses that it would be good to help cover. He is taking his security seriously. I showed up at his house a couple of months ago, and he had a security expert there telling him, you need lights out there in your yard, you need cameras here, you need to fix those windows so people can't get through them. Uh, he's already having a lot of the recommended equipment installed. I want to make sure that he has whatever he needs for any security upgrades. Apart from that, whatever extra money vocab has, he uses it to travel to some city and he finds the local Hebrew Israelites as they're out yelling at people on Saturdays. Vocab shows up with cameras rolling and he challenges their claims. They almost always back down, assuming they don't call police on him. But by the way, how scared are they of Vocab Malone that they'll call Esau to protect them from him? Let's make sure Vocab has enough for security and for travel and for any equipment he needs. So that's the plan. Get John and Vocab covered. The next in line is Adam Coleman. People from completely different parts of the country independently said to me, man, have you heard this Adam Coleman? This guy's smart. Adam has been doing long podcasts for a while. His friends convinced him that he needs to up his game on YouTube. Once he gets in his groove, he'll be the next channel to blow up. If you want to support my channel, you already know I'm on Patreon and Subscribestar. And now I have channel memberships. I didn't think they'd last a month, but they're still there. So if you want to join the Boom Squad, click the Join button. Also, I keep forgetting to tell people the PayPal link that's in the description box of my videos. That goes to a 501c3. So if you want a tax receipt for donations, use that PayPal link. It goes to a 501c3 called FACT. I usually use the money from that for travel expenses or new equipment. But whatever donations you send through that PayPal link, you'll get a tax receipt at the beginning of the new year. Uh, actually, if you're watching this video today, the day I post it, it's still technically 2019. So if you donate through PayPal today, it still counts towards the 2019 tax year. That's about it for now. Got some awesome stuff coming out in 2020. Got some awesome stuff coming out this month. Got some awesome stuff coming out this week. These are epic times to be a Christian. Let's make history.